Remember this tongue map? You probably haven't seen it since your elementary school days, but it's been around for decades. It divides your tongue into distinct sections that are responsible for interpreting sweet, sour, bitter, and salty tastes. It's just wrong and it's doing a disservice to really the whole population for disseminating this incorrect information. So why have generations of students been taught this map? And what else are we getting wrong about the science of taste? To find out, we talked to Dr. Robert Margolsky from the Monell Chemical Census Center. We've all seen this famous map, it's from about a century ago, of the tongue divided into different tastes like bitter and sweet. Um, turns out that is very much wrong. Um, can you walk us through why that is not the case, that our, our tongue is divided into these neat sections of different tastes? The taste map was uh, originated by a German researcher, and he came up with his taste map based on psychological studies of human subjects for their sensitivity of all different types of taste qualities, sweet, sour, salty, bitter. And what he found was that the sensitivity was not even throughout the tongue. There was least sensitivity at the very middle of the tongue and most sensitivity right around the edges. And he also found relatively small differences for different taste qualities, more sweet sensitivity towards the front, more bitter sensitivity towards the back. But this has been converted down the years into a more extreme version of the taste map that says, Sweet is at the front of the tongue, and that's where it is. Bitter is at the back, salty and sour uh, at the sides. And that is totally incorrect. Okay, so that's wrong. We have taste buds doing all sorts of things all over the tongue. Um, what exactly are those taste buds doing? Walk us through how taste buds actually produce what we experience as taste. At the front of your tongue, you find a lot of taste buds in bump-like structures. And each of those taste buds has 50 to 100 specialized taste receptor cells that will respond to different taste qualities. Some that respond to sweet, some to sour, others to salty, uh, and others to bitter. And most would add to it amino acid taste, umami. And in some cases, it looks like they respond to multiple types of taste qualities. Uh, in other cases, they seem to be very narrowly defined. When you are tasting things, uh, you perhaps start salivating. Is this in any way signaling to your stomach that, okay, this is happening, um, this is tasting good, prepare for food, I'm not going to spit this out, this is coming your way? Yes, that's exactly right. So the taste system, even though we take it for granted, serves a number of important factors in our life. The most significant one is a decision point. Is this good for me? Will I allow it into my body with the expectation that it will be nutritious and a good food source for me? Or is it potentially poisonous? Might it be toxic? What happens though when our taste buds get injured? Does the body have a really rapid response in bringing them, them back operationally? In general, um, the taste system is pretty robust and your taste cells have kind of a lifetime between one week, two weeks, maybe three weeks, and then they will regenerate. Rarely, you can lose function to those taste buds because of damage to uh, a branch of the nerve um, that is normally connecting to that taste bud. So on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have super tasters. Uh, I personally am not a super taster, unfortunately, uh, but what is going on in the bodies uh, of these folks who have become super tasters? The super taster phenotype is an observation where People are incredibly sensitive to all types of taste qualities, and it's most obvious with bitter compounds. The flip side are they're not exactly non-tasters, but they're very insensitive, and they can hardly detect at all um, these chemical compounds that you'll find in broccoli, Brussels sprouts. Um, and so maybe their favorite vegetable uh, is broccoli or Brussels sprouts because uh, they're tasting other compounds and not these particular uh, bitter compounds that uh, their super taster brethren are more sensitive to. Yeah, I find bitter particularly interesting because uh, it seems like something you might be able to adapt to. Like me personally, I absolutely didn't start drinking beer until I was 21, obviously. Um, and I didn't really like it at first, it was too bitter, but uh, now that I'm 35, I like it very much. Is there a way actually for the, the human body to adapt more to like a taste like bitter? Younger children tend to be very sensitive to bitter more than an adult. 
it's not genetics, but maybe it's uh, developmental or epigenetic, so that in an earlier stage, we're more sensitive to crave sweet and fat. But with time, we can learn that, hey, that bitter stuff is not really bad. And I can associate it with a very positive effect. For example, those that like beer for the alcohol buzz or those that like caffeine, either from coffee or tea or other beverages, can associate the bitterness with a pleasant psychological activity, a little bit of pleasant buzz from the alcohol. A little bit of pleasant buzz, always. We also wanted to talk about cilantro, uh, perhaps the most divisive herb on the planet. Some people hate it, some people think it tastes great, some people think it tastes like soap. I'm not one of those, luckily. What's going on with cilantro? Do we understand the mechanisms as to why some people hate it and some people don't? Again, it gets back into your genes. Some people will have the genetic type where cilantro has a wonderful flavor. And if you don't have that particular receptor or that version of the receptor, you'll have a different receptor that responds to it and just detects it as something kind of nasty, unpleasant. So there's a really interesting evolutionary story here, right? You have taste both for detecting bad things in our environment. You don't want to eat a plant that's poisonous. Um, if you can taste bitter compounds, you're more likely to avoid that plant and to survive. But the other side of this is also your body being able to anticipate certain foods and digest them better would theoretically give you an evolutionary advantage in a way, right? That's exactly right. So you can have both positive and negative selection. That's really interesting. And it kind of makes me think about other creatures out in the world, how they're tasting things that are going into their bodies. So would say a carnivore have fewer sweet receptors or, or really any at all um, because it just hasn't needed those throughout its evolutionary history. That's exactly right. And, and the cat is a very interesting example uh, of that. Cats, they live off a protein in their diet and they generally don't eat plants. And so they don't really need to be able to detect a sweet plant, a ripe fruit. They just need to be able to find the best source of protein. Cats actually cannot taste sweet. And so if you give a cat vanilla ice cream and your cat likes it, the reason they like it doesn't have to do with the sugar. They presumably like it because of the fat or maybe the amino acid um, umami component of it. So if we can understand taste better, is there a way that we might be able to improve human health when it comes to eating? There's kind of a disconnect between the way we evolved under conditions where it was hard to find ripe fruit or nutritive sources to the current day where you can just go to a grocery store and you can buy up as much of whatever you want. And so our tendency is to overeat and especially to overeat sugar and other uh, calorie rich uh, foods. So there are studies ongoing right now uh, at Monell to see if we can also change people's set point, their preference for sweet from a level where it would be high sugar, high calories to a level where it would be moderate levels of calories. And that could serve as a diet aid. And we would hope reduce the incidence of obesity uh, and thereby reduce the incidence of diabetes. Thanks for being with us today. And if you excuse me, I'm going to go eat a lot of food. My pleasure and enjoy your lunch.